Hello everyone and welcome back to Kizio Media. Today we are going to discuss uh, one of the biggest uh, decisions you will ever make in the UK buying a house in the UK. Um, whether you are a first time buyer or a seasoned home owner, navigating uh, the property market can be daunting but fear not. Uh, by the end of this video, uh, you will have a clear understanding of steps involved in buying a house in the UK. Number one step is um, assessing your finances. The first step in buying a house in UK is the first step you have to take is assessing your finances. Take a look at your savings, your income and your expenses to determine how much you can afford to spend on a property. Remember, you will also need to budget for additional costs like stamp duty, solicitor's fee, and moving expenses. So buying a house in the UK, like I said, you have to budget, uh, um, yeah, budget yourself, know your income, know your expenses, and then know how much you can save. Then the second step is now um, saving for a deposit. Once you have a clear picture of your finances, it is time to start saving for a deposit. In the UK, most lenders um, require a deposit of uh, at least 5% of the property value. So the larger your deposit, the better mortgage deal you will access to. You will have access to. So it's worth saving up as much as you can. So now you have to save, don't just target as that 5%, just have enough money because of other uh, expenses that um, may occur in the, in, the, in, the pro, in the processes. Now the third step you have to take is getting a mortgage agreement in principle. With your deposit saved, it is time to get a mortgage agreement in principle, um, AIP from a lender. This will give you an idea of how much you can borrow and shows the seller that you are a serious buyer. You can get an AIP by speaking to a, a mortgage advisor or uh, applying directly with a lender. So you need this. It's very important. Then the, the next step is finding a property. Now comes the fun part, finding your dream home. You have to start by searching online property portals, working with an estate agent or attending property auctions to you know, know the house you want to buy. Then you also have to make a list of uh, must have features and prioritize your uh, preferences to narrow down your options. Then the fifth step is making an offer. Once you have found a property you love or you like, it is time to make an offer. You can do this through an estate agent or uh, directly with the uh, seller. Your offer may be subject to negotiation, so be prepared to go back and then uh, 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 to go back and forth until you reach a price that works for both parties. Uh, number six. Um, is a uh, conveyance once your once your offer is accepted you will need to hire a solicitor or a conveyancer to handle the legal aspect of the purchase they will conduct searches review contracts and ensure that everything is in order for the sale to proceed smoothly so you need um, legal advice, you need a lawyer, you need you have to involve them so that they can make your uh, to make the work easier for you. Then the next step is um, is a uh, survey. Before finalizing the purchase, it is essential to have a survey conducted on the property. It, uh, this will identify any potential issues. Or defect that may affect its value or safety. Now, depending on the result of the survey, you may need to, re uh, to renegotiate um, the price or request repair from the seller. So it's very important. 
you have to do this. Um, the next step uh, is final, fi uh, finalizing the mortgage. With the software complete and the ledger checks done, it is time to finalize your mortgage. The lender will conduct evaluation of the property to ensure it's worth to ensure it's worth the amount you are borrowing. Once they are satisfied, you can proceed to the next step. And the next step is exchange contracts. The next step or the next milestone in buying in the buying process is exchanging contracts. This is when the sales becomes legally binding on both parties committing to completing the transaction. So you will need to pay deposit at this stage, usually around 5% of the property value. But I advise you to also have enough money with you for any unforeseen contingencies, foreseen, unforeseen expenses that come around. Then the number, um, the next step is completion. Finally, on the agreed upon completion date, the remaining fund will be transferred and then uh, you will receive the key to your own home. Congratulations, you are now officially a homeowner. Then the next step will have um, post completion. Now, after completing this purchase, there are still a few things to take care of, such as registering the property with the legal registry, arranging utilities, and updating your uh, address with the relevant parties. And um, there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide to buying a house in the UK. We hope you found this video helpful on your journey to home ownership. If you have any questions or topics you would like us to cover in the future video, please let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.